Hello, I didn't see you there. No, of course I did with doing a webcam thing. I can see my own picture like right here. It's there. Um, hi, my name is Shani. This is my Ionet Top Geek entry. Hopefully the mic holds out the whole way through as it kind of goes. Sorry, just bear with me. I'm going to see if I can do this in one take and see if it actually makes sense. So, my game pick. I have a lovely picture here that I drew of my main character. I have called him Derek Lang. Derek is quite a girl. Can you see? Can you see? This is Derek. He is blonde. He does actually have eyes despite me not being able to draw them. I'm just not very good at drawing eyes. He also gets around in this kind of silky kind of jumpsuit. Kind of cool. Anyway. What happens is Derek wakes up one day in his little town where he lives and everyone is gone. Where did everyone go? I don't know. What he can see though are a whole bunch of army dudes running around destroying the town. Not actually destroying the buildings as such but destroying people's personal items like tearing up their gardens, throwing out all the furniture from the houses, anything that shows any kind of personality. They're destroying it. Then they see you, Derek, and they come after you. Why? You don't know, but they've got guns. You don't have guns, so you got to get on out of there. So what happens is the game becomes a game of stealth, a game of hide and seek, more or less, where you need to start fashioning your own um, weapons together, where you want to use, pull up like part of a pick fence and stab someone or whack them over the head with a baseball bat or even try to run them down with a lawnmower who knows but anyway what this game basically entails is that you've got to get out of here seems quite easy what you can do is also when you're fighting with someone is knock them out then also steal part of their clothing so that you need to fit in as well so you'd be walking along in line with a whole heap of other bunch of army dudes and they can't tell because you look exactly like they do. That's another part of the concept that I want to introduce is mimicry. So you'd be walking along and you have a special um, menu would pop up on your HUD and you'd have specific control over parts of your body. Like you can make your arm wave like this or use a nice queen wave, maybe just a little pose or maybe you just want to be like my space it up and go anyway sorry you've also got a detection thing going on so you need to fit in if people see that you're not acting the same way as everyone else around you you're going to die or you're going to be captured and you don't want that to happen really you don't so what happens is you're fighting your way through the town, escaping people, evading people, dressing up like them, pretending to be like them, when finally you hit an underground kind of sewer place. What's this? You don't know anything about this. It's like a subway system. But then you see coming along the track as a train. Well, what else would there be? It's a subway station. Anyway, open up the track. Um, open up the track. Huh. Anyway, so what happens is you see that on these trains, it's full of dead bodies. Yeah, dead bodies. That's all your friends, your family. It's a very hard time for you. But then there's another point where you have to actually pretend to be a dead body. So you got to crawl on in there with all these dead people to escape your tiny little town. Once you escape your tiny little town, that's kind of like Act 1 over. There is a lot more to it. You'll go through a whole heap of different stages. Like um, there'll be, uh, say, a school stage. There'll be like a police stage. There'll be um, hospital stage where you're going through all of these different environments where you need to blend in with what's going on. You need to find new weapons and pretty much just escape to find your way to the subway station. So then once you go through the subway station, you get to ride on this train for a while, pretending that you're a dead body. Um, it's a lot harder than you think. If you really tried not to move for a couple of hours, it's kind of hard. Not that it'll actually be a couple of hours in gameplay, but, you know. What happens then is once you've 
um, gotten to your destination. Um, all the dead bodies are turfed out and you're kind of in a manufacturing plant. Um, then what happens is that eventually things will happen. I don't want to give too much away because if this actually does become a game, you're going to want to have a little mystery to it and I'm going to show you a really big twist in like about two seconds. So, what happens is you get out and you find out that you're in this huge mecha city. Yeah, mecha city. It's got shining big towers, it's all beautiful, it's crisp, it's clean, um, it's just really the, like, the height of civilization, whereas you've come from just like a little tiny hick town, pretty much. Um, this is where you will start to get guns, and you can fight back with guns and proper weapons, not just things that you've made up, like Molotov cocktails or, you know, throwing baseballs at people. It's gonna get fun, it's gonna get bloody! So, there is a huge twist that you find out. Um, the thing that has happened is all the abandoned babies, orphan children, they all get taken away and put into one of these little hick cities and are raised just by caretakers there. And every 25 years, someone comes along, um, decides we need to cull this city now. So they will come through and they will do a clean sweep. They will take everyone out of that city and pretty much just harvest them for you see in the mecha city everything is run on um, human parts so the cars run off blood um, oils or all blood things like that all human liquids um, the security cameras I'll show you a lovely little picture that I have here security cameras are obviously these are eyes they're put through so you have like um, the ceiling ones and they're all in like the embiotic fluid ah! so it's kind of a bit of a horror story going on there that you've got servitor robots walking around with parts of human brains in them parts of human hearts in them some of them have um human fingertips as well that so that they can you know give massages to people the whole city um basically is run on human parts this is a huge big twist that you find out um the game itself will have multiple endings depending on your actions during the game um, also on what you choose to do in the mecha city as well um, whether you choose to tell everyone that this is what's going on um, whether you fail in that or whether you could tell them but they already know about it and they're not really phased the one mechanic that I do just want to make really clear is the mimicry um, <coughs> pardon me it is something that will be a main focus point in the game where you have to blend in. Um, the game isn't more about how many enemies that you kill or you know um, how much blood you leave in your wake. It's about fitting in to your environment, thinking about things, working out these puzzles of how to get by people without actually using a weapon. So, yeah. I've also got a quick sketch of how the huddle looks. So here, whoops. up here we've got our health and our ammunition. Down here we've got, where is it? Here is a weapon. Um, I started off trying to draw a gun. I can't draw a gun, so that's a plank of wood. Yeah, you can use a plank of wood if you want. Um, then right in the middle, we've got things like the crosshairs as well which is awesome, you can zoom in as well to, you know, do all your kind of snipering shots, things like that. Ah! Sorry, I had to go grab something. My controller. Right, the type of controls that you want to use for the game is that we've got, oh, I'm trying to do this backwards. Uh, okay, so we've got our movement, we've got things looking around, we've got gun selection as well, a little D-pad, which is awesome. We have reload is going to be the B button. Um, a is going to be using things in the world as well. You know, opening doors, picking up things, all that kind of thing. Um, why? Why do they use Y for? I can't remember. Honestly, I can't. But we've got things like our left trigger, which is going to be shooting. Right trigger, which will be actually to zoom in. So if you're holding that, you're um, if you're holding in your left trigger 
and your right trigger, you'll be zooming in and shooting. Does that make sense? Yes? Mm. Then we got our bumpers, do, 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 which will be to throw um, the projectiles as well. Or you can throw the thing that you've got in your hand. So if you're carrying a plank of wood, you can throw it. You don't actually have to run around and hit people. Like, it's a baseball bat. <laughs> so, that was kind of my game. Um, something that's very heavy on storylines that has these gruesome, gross aspects to it that also has um, a huge twist in it so the first part of the game you think you're nearing the end of it and then bam the world opens up completely and the game just keeps going there's nothing like that when you think that you're enjoying the game and you think it's almost over and then something happens and it keeps going um, I love games like that it's awesome feeling when you know and you discover that you get to play it for a little bit longer so, I think that's everything that I wanted to say about my game. I did have a lot more drawings and stuff, but I also have a puppy. What does my puppy do? My puppy eats and sleeps. My puppy also eats on textures as well, everything else. I would show him, but he's outside. His name is Hatch. He's very sweet. So, this is me finishing up my entry. Um, it's not very interesting, but hopefully the creativity of my game, the originality of it, all of that speaks for itself. <laughs> or, because this is going on YouTube and everyone loves cats on YouTube, this is my kitty Pippa. And this is my kitty Bailey. So, from me and my kittens, um, that is my game design. I hope you all enjoy.